This morning I uh, was spending some time with the Lord and he um, clearly prompted me to share a dream that I had. And I have not shared dreams in a while, but this dream um, was on June 8th of 2024. So just a few days ago and it was pretty... It was pretty intense, and at the time when I woke up, I didn't understand it at all. Um, but incredibly, as I sought the Lord on interpretation, he gave me an immediate interpretation that I want to share with you because I, I believe it's a warning. I believe it's a warning for what it, we are just literally on the cusp of. And um, so I'm going to share the dream, and then I am going to share the interpretation that the Lord brought um, along with um, the fact that he he actually affirmed this through a dream that I had four years ago uh, this morning, and, and that was when he asked me to share. So um, in this dream, I was in a car with one of my friends that I'm in ministry with, and she was driving, and she was telling me in the dream that she had a dream from the Lord. And she said, the AUFSA is coming, O-W-F-S-A. And um, she said the AUFSA was coming to put to rest or to terminate. I'm not exactly sure on the wording on that. When I woke up in the morning, I, 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 I was trying to bring clarity to that. But um, I knew in the dream that whoever the AUFSA was, that it was coming to destroy, to kill, to steal. Um, and our colony or the group that we had lived in during, during this dream it was like we were one of those last groups that was being kept alive, but that she was warning me that the Lord had showed her that they were coming for us. And I remember being um, out of the car then and then in a different scene. And I was actually on the phone with the same friend that I'm in ministry with. And I was furniture shopping and I was trying to find a specific couch for a space that we lived in. And as I was dreaming this, um, it, it's interesting because this doesn't happen very often, but as I was dreaming this, I I knew I was receiving a dream from the Lord as I was going through the actions of the dream. And so um I'm I'm furniture shopping, I'm in a in a warehouse type setting, and I'm it's all couches. I'm so I'm looking for a sofa, specifically a sofa. And I'm there's sofas everywhere. And um I remember there were other scenes in the dream, but these are the points that the Lord highlighted to me. Now you may be hearing this and going like, okay, this makes no sense. I have no idea where she's going with this. And I felt the same way when I woke up. I was like, okay, AUFSA. And actually I woke up very early in the morning and I quickly texted myself the letters O-W-F-S-A because I felt that if I did not, that I would forget in the morning. And sure enough, when I woke up in the morning, I had forgotten what letters were in the dream. And so I had to go back to my phone in my notes and look at that. So when I got up in the morning, the first thing I started doing was praying, obviously, seeking the Lord. And then I went to Google and I started looking up AUFSA to see if it was an acronym for anything. Nothing popped up. And then um, <clears throat> the Lord brought me to a word scrambler or letter scrambler. And as soon as I put those letters in the letter scrambler, SOFA came up, S-O-W-F-A. Now, it hit me hard because I'm going, okay, I was sofa shopping in this dream. I was looking for a sofa. Lord, what are you trying to show me about a sofa? So I just put in sofa and into Google. And the very first thing that popped up for sofa wasn't a couch. It was a sofa agreement, which is an agreement, if you look it up on Google, is an agreement to allow foreign military to reside in a certain country. And I'm going to just go to my notes here. Um, it's called a status of forces agreement. It's an agreement between a host country and a foreign nation stationing military forces in that country. Now I will tell you, I'm not going to go into all the dreams the Lord has given me over the last five years of foreign military coming into our nation. And I think that if you are awake to what is going on in our country and that if you're paying attention, you know that we are being warned of foreign troops in our country. You know that we are in a border crisis. You know that there's infiltration happening. You know that when Israel was struck by Hamas, that there was um, uh, sleeper cells, that there were underground tunnels, that there were things going on. And this is not to create fear, but 
This is to put us into a position where we are not the ones who are just eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and just going about our life. Our life doesn't stop. We're called to live until the day that the Lord returns. That being said, we're called to live not in fear of what's coming, not in fear of what the world is going to do to us, but um, in fear and reverence of who God is, knowing that the fear of the Lord overshadows any fear that this world could bring. Now, I will tell you, um, we own an ice cream shop in Croton, Michigan, and um, we worship there and we we do deliverance there and we pray for people there. And it is a, it is an outreach. It is a mission field. And on Sunday night, we had um, a worship night there and the Lord brought a word and it was from first Kings 18. And here in first Kings 18, what we see is Elijah, the prophet is about to bring fire. Well, God is about to bring fire through Elijah, the prophet from heaven. Um, and just before Elijah is used in that way by God. Uh, he asks the people a question. He says to them, how long will you waver between two opinions? If Baal is God, serve him. But if, if God is God, serve him. If the God of Israel is the true God, serve him. How long will you waver? And what we're seeing right now is we're living in a time where people are mixing religions. They're mixing faith practice. It's almost like they're grabbing at every single belief and they're doing it because then they can stay comfortable where they're at because different beliefs um, give permission for them to do different things. And so we're living in this position where it, it, we're living between different opinions. We're, we're wavering. Yes, I believe this about Christianity, but I believe this about Buddhism and, and we're just wavering. And I believe right now, right this very minute is the time that we have to make a choice. We have to choose. We have to stop wavering. We have to choose a side. We have to choose what God we will serve. And we may not be serving uh, golden calves right now, but we are serving our cell phone, social media, our financial situation, um, the things that we own. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, worshiping your children, your reputation, the way you look like we are serving all of these false gods and we have to choose today. What God will you serve? And when calamity strikes and it will, and this isn't like a doomsday video. It's just plain truth. It will it will come. Darkness will come. Judgment will come. Because God is a perfect father, but he is also a perfectly righteous judge. And our country is in a position right now where we are on the brink of judgment. And it will come. And that is not to create fear. But I, my prayer is that it creates a conviction, a holy conviction in your heart today that you will choose a side, that you will choose what God you are going to serve because I will tell you that I have served the other side in more ways than one. And in that place, I had mountains that felt really high and valleys that felt really low, but every single mountain I was on was built on sinking sand. It never stood for long. And since serving the one true God since serving Christ Jesus, I now, even when things look bad, even when finances aren't perfect, even when relationships are, are hard, even in those times, there's peace, not as the world offers it, but perfect peace, according to John 14, 27. And I have that perfect peace and I have that steadfast hope in Christ. And so many are living hopeless right now. And I'm telling you, judgment is coming. The Lord is warning about it. This morning, he took me to dreams from August and September of 2020, where actually our own military was coming against us. And, and in this nation, we're living divided. And so in a, a nation divided against itself, it will crumble and we will come against one another. And so we have to to live from a position of serving the one true God, knowing that this life doesn't even belong to us, that it belongs to him, and not living in a position of fear, but in bold proclamation of who Jesus Christ is, knowing that this life is so short and that we are not living for now, we are living for eternity. And yes, this world is broken because sin broke this world. And we're also living in a time where people don't even want to deal with sin. They want to be, they want to rationalize their sin. They want to stay in their sin. They want to stay in that comfortable chair of sin, not knowing that it's actually an electric chair. 
So now is the time to stand for what you actually believe. Stop wavering between two opinions. It will not be worth it. There will be a day when you will stand before the Father, I will stand before the Father, and there will be nobody else there to rationalize with you or for you or to stand on your behalf, only Christ Jesus. And if you deny him by the way you live or the words that you speak, then he will die, deny you before the Father. And that is the ultimate tragedy in all of this. And so um, I just pray that this has um, pricked your heart, that the Father has moved today um, in your mind, body, soul, and spirit. And Lord, I just ask right now in Jesus' name that every single person that hears this message, Lord, that they would share it, that they would that they would um, be bold in proclamation for what you're you're calling them to be bold in, and that the things of this world would no longer hold their heart in Jesus' name. So I thank you for listening, and um, I just pray that God blesses you, and that you move in obedience to the conviction of Christ.